Hello and welcome back to the House of Valentina fashion channel. I am so excited about today's video because we are going to be talking about trends you might want to avoid. They're ones I'm definitely avoiding and I thought I'd go through some of the spring summer runway shows we've been looking at and some of the styles that we're seeing coming out and let's have a nice long chat about why we might not want to participate in these trends, what they even mean and why we're even seeing them, and maybe how we can adapt them and things that we might want to take from them. It's gonna be a really fun video. I think you guys are gonna love it. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump in. I've got my phone here and I've been looking everything up, but I will pop up the pictures for you as we go. So I was looking at Gucci. And I love a lot of Gucci products. So a lot of people get aggravated that Gucci is quite trendy. And you know what? If you enjoy those trendy pieces, Gucci is gonna hook you up. They've also got a really great, like they've got really great, beautiful, long lasting pieces as well. But when you look at the spring summer collection, it is packed with acidic colors. That's how I think them. They almost feel like they're almost like gonna hurt your teeth. Like they're so acidic. It's these really, really acidic limes, yellows and oranges, pinks. I personally just don't love these colors. I don't love these colors for a few reasons. First of all, anybody that knows me knows that I love a really neutral palette. I like to have a, a very muted, natural kind of looking palette in general, plus leather, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you get to have your accents, okay? So if you like a neutral palette in general, or if you like lots of color, I think that there's a lot of great pieces out there, but the acidic colors that we're seeing from Gucci, those really, I don't feel like they look very good on most people's skin. I will say that if you've got really, really dark skin, that green might look absolutely amazing on you. But for most of us, we can't wear those colors without looking sickly. So I don't think that the point of this is to bash Gucci, but really I hope what you'll take away from this is to think about the colors that you're seeing coming out and think about how that's gonna look on you. And for me, I'm, I'm thumbing through Gucci and I'm saying the majority of these pieces, most of them aren't gonna look great on me. I think some of the, the purpley colors and different things that you're seeing coming out, those just aren't pieces that I would ever buy and I would wear over and over. So if you've got plenty of money to spend or if you're just a person that literally wears color all the time, I would definitely check out that spring summer collection because the pieces themselves are going to be amazing. But Gucci also sells a lot of classic pieces. So if you're like me and you prefer a little bit more of a classic modern wardrobe, check out some of their other pieces because they've got some gorgeous ones. I love their Marmot bags. I love the traditional Gucci print. Some people say, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's not trendy enough. I'm like, that's perfect. I'll take that piece. I want this piece. This to be something I'm gonna hand down to my kids, okay? So that's what I'm looking for. And I think that looking at those things, why are people wanting color like that? Well, I think it's because there's a demand for it. I'm gonna assume that Gucci's putting those colors out because people are wanting it. And there's a little bit in Gucci for everybody. Uh, my husband has a pair of their sneakers he loves them says it's the most comfortable shoe he's ever owned in his entire life i haven't made that leap myself yet for a gucci pair of shoes but there are pieces that you can buy from gucci that'll last you a lifetime beautiful well-cut blazers gorgeous uh, tops and different things that will be something that you can have in your wardrobe but for me i'm going to be avoiding those acidic colors because they're not gonna do my skin any favors, so it's gonna it's a total out for me. Okay, so I was on Chanel and I was looking at their 2022-23. It's their Metier de Dart show. Um, I was looking to do this collection and I was like, I don't understand this at all. And when I see something like that, I really try to understand the mentality behind a collection. And we've been talking about, I don't know if we talked about that on this channel yet. Uh, I think we've been talking about it definitely on the home channel about how maximalism is really gonna be making a comeback. Well, if you look at that collection, you're going to see that it's a very maximal approach to fashion. And it's just more layered with more, layered upon more. So if you are a maximalist, you may actually love this collection. You may love the fact that they've just layered so many colors into so many of their pieces. You're gonna love uh, the fact that each of the garments has lots of layers to it. 
and the fact that they have styled these outfits up with lots of stuff. So there's lots of necklaces, there's lots of layers to every single thing that they're doing, and it's just layer upon layer upon layer. When I look at that, I, I personally look at that and say, that's not a look that I would ever wear. I mean, you can see, I'm wearing like a necklace, right? I, I don't wear, I've got a bracelet and a little bit of jewelry. I'm not a maximalist when it comes to how I dress. And this is such a learning opportunity for us. This is why I like these shows. A lot of people get very upset about fashion shows. They're like, oh, I don't, I, who would wear that? Well, it doesn't really matter whether you wanna go and buy it or not. There's always something to learn from it. And for me, I see the artistry in these pieces, the couture collections where they have limitless budget and they can really show such a, an artistry to things. I hope that that never goes away because that is that to me is the essence of fashion. And then sometimes we get to wear some of those pieces. And I think that that is just so cool that what we wear can also be an, an act of art and an act of self-expression. That's why I love it. So I don't worry about the price tags on any of these items. I don't worry about whether I'll ever own a Chanel Couture item or even one of their uh, regular, they're ready to wear. Either way, I'm always gonna learn from them. I think that this is a really good sign of trends that are going to, you're gonna be seeing a lot more of. And I think that that layering of lots and lots of color is something that a lot of people will really, really enjoy. I'm just not gonna be one of them. I just don't enjoy that. I will buy pieces like that, I never wear it. And eventually I just get rid of it because not like in the trash, but pass it forward to somebody or sell it. But I, I'm just never gonna wear a, a look with pink pants embroidery all over the front and layers of layers and layers of necklaces. That's just not a look that I'm ever going to do. But if you pop over to their cruise 2022-23, these are a lot of the looks that'll actually be hitting the stores. These are the looks that you're gonna be wearing now in the spring. You're gonna see there is still a lot of color, but it's definitely more pared back in that collection. I see a lot of pieces that I would definitely buy myself. I feel like the looks are definitely something that I would really like. I'm seeing a lot of tiny bags and I really love that. I love that they've really balanced pops of color. This was shot in Miami and it really just has that sort of light-hearted feeling to it. I really like this one. So when you're looking at fashion, don't just look at something and go, I don't like it and just discard it. Look at it and learn why you do or don't like something and what that means about your personal style. And this will really help you to find your own style and really develop it over time. One of the trends that I have to say that I saw on Chanel and I saw on Bottega, Veneta as well. Uh, okay, so I'm saying that this is a trend that I'm not going to jump onto. Part of that's because I already did jump onto and I kind of learned my lesson. And then the other part of me is like, okay, so I bought the Bottega Veneta bag that has the little triangle top and you have to carry it with your hand. I, I'm not gonna go grab it right now. I'll just pop up a picture for you. You have to literally carry it like this because I have small hands and wrists so I'm able to put my hand through it. I don't think most people too could because I'm five foot one, I'm like the size of a kid. I don't think most people would be able to put their hand through there. So basically, and even then it's not really that comfortable. Uh, most people are gonna have to carry it like this. Well, the thing is, is I've learned is that it can be a little bit annoying if you have to carry something by a top handle. And a lot of companies are coming out with some beautiful, beautiful bags. When you're looking at bags, because when you see those bags hitting the runway, you're gonna always see them hitting mainstream stores as well. So don't worry whether you're gonna buy a Bottega or a Chanel bag. The point is, take away, you're gonna see that style trickling down into mainstream and you may wanna pass on that style or at least go in with your eyes open. All right, let's chat about the next trend that I'm going to be passing on and that is the boho roadie look. <laughs> it's probably not gonna surprise you. That's not a look that I really want to do. I have to tell you, I have tried that look. Uh, my husband and I lived in Spain uh, for about three years when our daughter was a baby. So this was about 20 years ago. And I I did that look. I did a very boho look, especially when we visit visited southern Spain. We were down in, Tar in Tarifa, and it's a very like boho town, and there's uh, kite kite sailing and, and all this fun stuff and, and uh, surfing, kite surfing. That's what it's called. 
I, I had like a little handkerchief in my, like an, I might tied in my hair and I had a very boho look that I did that summer and it was fun. I'm just not gonna dress like that now. <laughs> I was about 25 doing that and, or 22-ish, I don't know, I was young. I was very young, I had her very young and I was very much into the spirit of the area. If I was back in Tarifa, I don't know, I might still do a little bit of a boho look, but I wouldn't do the boho look that I'm seeing from Celine. I literally absolutely adore Celine's classic pieces. They are beautiful. I would own all of them. I think that they are gorgeous. I've looked at their bags. I love them. I love the style that they're putting out. They have so many gorgeous, stunning, classic pieces. However, part of the uh, 2023 summer collection, part of it is super classic and oh, like the striped sweater and some of the blazers that came out of that collection. I'm not really sure where they have summer because they're wearing like, you know, heavy boots in these looks and I'm like, you must not live in Georgia <laughs> because it's way too hot here for us to wear boots like that with these looks. But even still, the more you look through the looks, we start moving away from those gorgeous classic jackets and the beautiful, I love the little collared tops that are in that. Uh, some of the dresses are really, really pretty. And then some of it just gets too boho. It just gets too boho. And I think being real, realistic about styles that you have tried is a really good way of understanding what is gonna be well-spent money for you now. So I've tried that look and I got rid of all that boho kind of stuff. I've tried boho a few times and I've just realized, I remember telling my husband, I was like, I just don't do boho, okay? And he's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> my daughter loves that look. She loves that boho kind of grungy look and I'm like, it's just not for me. I think being real realistic about your own personal style and learning from some of your style mistakes is a way of making less of them. It's the Okay, I'm like, oh, that's the advantage of being old. I'm like, well, there's other advantages, right? But you start to have a savings account. Things hopefully get a little bit better as you get older. You get wrinkles and other things to go with it. I don't know. But I will say that one benefit of getting older is that you learn. You start to learn. You learn what doesn't work. And it's all a process. And I think a lot of times we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that we have to learn it all. And we should never make any mistakes. And we just beat ourselves up, at least I do. Be I beat myself up when I've spent money on something. It doesn't matter whether it's from Amazon or from a designer brand, it does not matter to me. I don't like to waste money, I like for it to be well spent. So whether it's a penny or I don't know, a thousand dollars, I want every single last cent I spend to be well spent. So I had to realize that part of the process is is that you learn. You learn what, you're, what you like and what you don't like, and what to keep and what to get rid of, and for me, the boho look, I'm not gonna do that again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, can I just tell you, there is a style, there is something that has come out and I am like, what? No. I, I can't even bring myself to even try this style on. And that, it's everywhere. If, if you haven't seen it hit your mainstream stores, I promise you, it's coming. Cause it is, Everywhere, all the runways, everybody's got these shoes. Fendi and Valentino are two that I'm like, just so like, no, 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 no. And that is a platform shoe. I hate them. I just look at them and I'm like, I do not understand. I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand what the appeal is. I don't look at it and I, I can't even give it a chance. I just look at it and I hate it. I do not like it. I'm not gonna change my mind. When the square toe came out, I was like, mm, that's weird, no. Um, <laughs> but then I tried it again and I was like, mm, I kinda like some of this. This is not one of those things. <laughs> this is not going to be one of them. So Fendi and Valentino have some lots of different options right now and a lot of different companies have these. I hate them. I think that they're hideous. I don't understand why you would want to put such a heavy shoe on your foot. First of all, it's gonna be heavy to walk in. It looks like a massive tripping hazard. As someone who's, I'm currently wearing a four inch heel right now. I know I can't show you, it would be unladylike. 
when I'm wearing a 4.1 inch heel, okay? I am wearing a very high heel right now. I wear high heels all the time. A platform shoe is like literally just break your ankle. Just throw yourself down and just go ahead and break your ankle. Those shoes are a hazard. A high heel is something that you can balance in. It's delicate, it's light on your foot. Platform shoes are heavy and they're awkward. I will never, I will never ever buy those shoes. And you have my word on that because I'm normally like, I don't never say never. I'm saying never, I will not buy those. I'm just not going to. I think that they're dangerous. I think that they're ugly. And I think we should all just pass on them. There, okay, that's my two bit. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the crinoline. Tom Brown came out with the crinoline and I'm like, what? What is going on here? Crinolines, no joke. I actually really love historical things. I have a minor in history. I love history. Every time we go, living in Europe was like a dream. You're just living in history. I loved all the old buildings. I love all the architecture. I love it. However, I don't know that I'm ready to wear a crinoline. <laughs> I did see somebody, I think that Koss has some of these pieces as well. They do have that long, and I'm even wearing a long kind of like, pleated kind of dress. That look I think could come from that crinoline uh, look and still be blended in, but actually wearing a crinoline under my skirt, uh, I don't see myself doing that anytime soon, but I'm kind of excited because I'm like, that's really fun silhouette that we have not seen in a really long time. And when I was younger, I was obsessed with like the 50s and 60s and all the little sock hop kind of stuff. If that came back, I can't say that I wouldn't want to at least contemplate hopping onto that one, but I'm just not ready. I think sometimes you're gonna see stuff that hits the runways and you're just not ready for it. And you may never be ready for it. And this is one of those things, I'm gonna wait and see, but for now, I'm passing. Mio Mio, what is up with all the pockets? I mean, pockets everywhere. Who needs that many pockets? It goes back to the idea of more is more. We're seeing more of everything, more embellishments. I'm like, do I have pockets? No, see, I don't have pockets on this. Pockets definitely add more to whatever you're wearing. I tend to like things that are just a little bit more pared back. I'm not opposed to pockets, but Mio Mio seems to be taking it too far. However, I think you're gonna start seeing pockets coming back in on things. You're gonna be seeing more of those things. And so for now I'm saying, mm, that's too many pockets for me, but I'm open. I'm open to it. I might like that later on. <laughs> All right, my camera's overheating and my battery's almost dead. So we gotta wrap this up fast. Let's wrap up with Ralph Lauren and the Western collection. It's just too themey for me. It's just too themey. I just, I maybe, I, I don't think I'd even use any of the pieces out of it. It's just too themey. And I really love the classic pieces from Ralph Lauren, but the themey Western look, it's just not one that I, I really wanna wear. Again, it kind of looks a little bit bohemian and I know this about myself. Too many ruffles, too many florals, too themey. I'm never gonna keep it. So I hope today has been a lot of fun for you. I hope that you have just felt inspired by the video. I know that it can be a lot of fun to look at, at those fashion shows and please somebody start inviting me to all of them. I'd love to be able to see them in person, but you can see a lot online these days and it really gives you a clue as to what's gonna be coming and gives you food for thought to think about what you really like. And as you're building out your wardrobe, what kind of pieces are we gonna be really what kind of pieces you can put into your wardrobe that will be money well spent. So I hope it's really inspired you. I hope you wanna hit subscribe, come back again, hang out with us. Don't forget we've got a whole library of videos that you can also check out. I'm gonna leave you with a suggestion. I'm gonna love you and leave you. I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.